Hi everyone and welcome to this mod showcase featuring the Draconis Glaucus by Mermo Kalyon. As the name implies, this creature is based on the Blue Dragon Sea Slug, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. It's a beautiful animal in real life, and we get to have the Arc equivalent for us today. This is only available in Arc Ascended in ASA, and for good reason, because the new graphics and the new just modern capabilities make these creatures really shine so much more. So you won't find it in Arc Survival Evolved, but it does mean it's going to be with us here in ASA for a very long time to come, so I'm glad we get it this early. Now, I don't believe there's actually a dossier for this creature available, so I'm going to go ahead then and grab my trusty old Baronix and immediately go in and try to find one first. As far as gameplay goes, I've not seen anything of the Draconis Glaucus. I want to keep myself fresh and spoiler free. I've seen the official wildcard modding spotlights, seen a couple of screenshots, it looks incredible. <gasps> and I already see one. Oh, wow, look at, let's get the spyglass out, hold on. Oh, you spot it is upside down. Look at that. Oh, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. So you're probably wondering, like, really, a Baryonyx? I'm using a Baryonyx. I don't think this would be enough to do with the Glaucus. But I'm using a Baryonyx because this is what I would normally use in a genuine playthrough. I tend to go to the ocean with my Barry first. If it doesn't work out, I will use a Basilosaurus, my second go-to. It's so ominous seeing it hover like that. So the idle animation for these guys is, you know, like, like you'd imagine a sea slug. They kind of float to the surface and just kind of vibe and chill. It looks a little bit skew -eff. It looks so ominous, a silhouette. It's kind of like giant megaloceros antlers. Wow. It's, oh, it's beautiful. Look at this. And they are passive, you might notice. I can get real up and close. Level 80 Wild Glaucus. Notice, by the way, uh, ooh. Oh, okay, yeah, jellyfish. Yep, yeah, that's the thing, by the way, jellyfish. I don't like my underwater graphics. Well, there you go, then. Yeah, um, fair warning. These guys do spawn with a pack of jellyfish. And that is for good reason. We'll get into that in, in a bit. But I want to talk a bit more about this creature first. Doesn't that just look amazing? So, the entire mod concept, the coding, the idea, everything was by... Remember Cully and themselves. The model and animations was by Scorching Kami. The concept art by Jade317. Sound by Mordekaiser and the icon by Aeroy2810. So a bit of a cooperative effort and I can't wait to see how this all comes together. Okay, now that I've got my underwater fog fixed because I really didn't like that before. <laughs> Let's actually begin with attempting to tame this awesome new beast. So I gotta be careful, I don't actually harvest these. I need their corpses. And I'm kind of scared by the amount of these here. Um, should be fine, should be fine, honestly. Right, let's go ahead then and drag you. So what does this actually look like then? So these are indeed a passatame. Oh, but it's a little bit tricky. Let me go with you before you cause any problems. Hold on one second. Oh God, it's just so majestic. The way it's just chilling there. I got this little jellyfish coming towards me and Oh, these are beautiful. I do love this so much. Okay, so this is a passatame. There we go. I'm going to feed the Nadaria to the Glaucus, and it doesn't show me any progress. This isn't the actual taming itself, but this is how you instigate getting one of these. So I've got to feed a couple of them. So I'm going to keep track of that. That's two so far. Two, three. I'll just change color a little bit. I think it may have just been a lighting thing. Okay, okay, just, just just double check. Uh, absolutely nothing going on. All right, to be expected. Oh, by the way, you might see a couple of new creatures, such as the Marlin. This is another mod by Memricolian. It's not the mod we're looking at today, but if I'm going to be doing an underwater creature mod, I may as well include some of the others from Merim's own collection, and that is the Atlas Fish. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? We're not covering that mod today, but it just makes sense to include that one as well. So, Mamma Kalyan's been very, very busy, and you should definitely check out all of their stuff. That is four jellyfish so far. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Oh, not quite. Try again. Number, ooh, about here. Eight. Yep, there we go. The hitbox is actually quite large. Um, if anything, I'm finally getting too close to it. It's actually more problematic than being around it, which is quite interesting. Oh, look at those glowies. <gasps> look at the way it shimmers. Oh, wow. This is Nadaria, number nine, of which I was getting attacked by a shark. Of course it is. 
So, number nine. And I do need to find a tenth one. I did accidentally kill a couple by mistake, so I'm going to have to somehow uh, find a tenth to instigate the next part. I'll just quickly get rid of these. Oh, that's really handy! Okay, so I mentioned that the Glauca spawns with jellyfish. It just respawned a whole bunch. Ooh, it just respawned a whole bunch more. That's really fantastic. These are required to tame the creature. As I mentioned, jellyfish are quite rare in ASA. So if you mess up and you actually kill a few too many, or you accidentally kill any at all, really, for that matter, it actually brings more for you. That is, mm, man, that's a really, really considerate touch. And now this is a point where things go interesting. Oh, it's got a boss bar. That's never in my sight. Oh God, it's got a boss bar. I don't like the, oh my goodness. Oh, so. <laughs> Any of you familiar with Primal Fear, Indominus Rex, you have to kill it. Or not kill it, sorry, I've got to damage it. You've got to damage the Glaucus really low. Ooh. Did it just... It, it dismounted me. Oh no, it... Oh, it stunned you. I see what happened. Oh, good lord. Yeah, so I had a feeling that the Baryonyx wasn't going to be good enough. But basically, you have to damage this far enough to be able to then have it lay an egg. It cannot be stunned. I've been torpored. Interesting. Wow. Okay. This is no early game tame. I'm glad. I wanted to try it. I had a feeling. I'm glad I did. You can't just jump in with a Baryonyx. Fantastic. Okay, so now that the Glaucus has been um, activated, shall we say. Oh, it is fast and it is aggressive. It is angry. But I should be much safer, you know, immunity to stuns, etc, etc. It's got much more tankier. Just using a regular primitive saddle, no imprint, no levels, bog standard, 150 basilo. Although I'd recommend being a bit more prepared. Because this is only level 80, but it's a lot higher. If it was, you know, had multiple of them, that'd be interesting. Oh, uh, it is beautiful. It's so vibrant. Oh, I love it. Oh, the effects are also just so cool. All right. Can we keep on chomping away then? In hindsight, I would also mention that Basilo is probably just the best one to go for because after all, it does get stunned by the Ladarias. So, you know, the jellyfish. So it kind of makes sense. It's very well thought out and a little bit obvious. Oh. Was that the egg? Oh, it's fleeing. Well, that is definitely the egg and it's outright fleeing. Okay. Well, there you go then. So then, that is how you get your very own Draconis Glaucus. And apparently, as soon as I looked away, it just outright vanished. Well, that's a little bit ominous. Okay then, let's bring it to the shallows over here. Drop it. Is it ready to be incubated? Yep, it is currently incubating as we seek and slowly floating upwards. Hmm. All right, the egg is about ready to hatch and... Oh, 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 it's so tiny. Oh my God, look at you, wow. Hold on, let's get you out of the way quickly. Oh, what an absolute tiny little thing. Oh, and such beautiful colors. It's really is beautiful. I'm noticing that lack of any glowies. Um, that could just be just like the general lighting. Maybe the glowies don't really kick in until it's an older age. Oh, but that is absolutely wonderful. And in terms of the stat weights, it's got 372 weight, quite low. 9,000 health base, which is really high. I doubt I've got any exceptional stats on this, probably average. So 9,000 base health, it's really, really good. 900 stamina is quite nice, 237 melee is also quite nice. Weight is surprisingly low, but I guess it's not really the main attraction to this creature. Oh, don't you just look wonderful. Right, so now we have our fully grown Glaucus, and this is not sprinting, not imprinted. Look at how fast this is. Wow, no imprint, no sprint. Let's sprint now. Oh, it is beautiful, and it is speedy. It is so smooth, guys. This is so smooth. Oh my god. It feels amazing. It actually feels amazing to ride. It is incredibly responsive. This is probably going to quickly be my new favorite sea creature. It is so responsive. And of course, for those wondering, the actual saddle itself is available at level 88. So this is definitely intended to be quite a late game creature. So again, you really shouldn't just charge it for the Baryonyx. It's not going to work. My goodness, I just really can't get over just how good this feels and how good it looks to watch, <laughs> you know, the actual physical animations. They're just so nice. 
Oh, it's a Moser. Okay. So, not in Brint. Oh, well, the Moser does a bit of damage itself, but you are doing 154 per. What level's that, Moser? I get a little uh, quick look on that. I mean, I guess I'll just quickly do this. 75. Wow. Do you go backwards? You can go backwards. Oh, this is a very player-friendly creature, and that bloom is a little bit unbearable, not gonna lie. So you can just go like back and forth like this, get the little snipey hits in, even though it's still attacking me back. You can't strafe. You cannot strafe, so go sideways like a griffin can. So it does lack that, but oh god, you are so speedy. I am not sprinting. And I'm easily outpacing a Mosasaur. And yeah, that Mosasaur is getting bruised, it's getting bloody. I cannot wait to see this with the imprint bonus. Oh wait, hold on. It's unconscious. I just knocked out a Mosasaur. I did not know that was an aspect of this creature. I knew that, um, you know, from being attacked by it earlier, trying to get his egg, obviously is electrical attacks, I thought did Torpor. No, it's Bite does. Oh, that's wild. Oh, there's a whole bunch of jellyfish. That means, yep, there's another one. Look at you, <laughs> oh, 165. That spawns past max. Okay, these are the Wyverns of the sea. That is a past max level 150, it's 165, and again, it's just so beautiful, and I'm stuck inside it. Oh, there we go. Wow, I am really excited to play this on my own servers. This is absolutely awesome. I would highly, highly recommend. Okay, so we're back in the daytime now because that balloon was a little bit much, wasn't it? And this is now a 100% imprint sprinting. It, it just feels so, so good. My goodness. Oh, that is a lead. That is a regular lead. Yep, okay. I do 184 damage, unleveled, full imprint. Oh, here's a fun idea. How do- Oh, it's an Alpha 2. Oh, that's an Alpha 2. So, okay, well, let's find out the hard way. Can these guys get gripped? <laughs> Wasn't really anticipating this kind of fight. Oh, I'm being touched. I'm being tickled for a lot of damage. It is a primitive saddle after all. But... It doesn't seem like the Tuso can grip. Is the Glaucus immune to grips? I think it actually is. Wow. So, after having too much fun with this Glaucus, I've learned a couple of things. First of all, these things are powerful. Their damage deals Torpor. Is that Alpha Shark I just said? I don't think so. No, just regular. Their damage deals Torpor. Right click is a very long breath attack. Look at that! <laughs> Oh my god, that just does so much damage, it's ridiculous. They cannot be grabbed by two souls. When they receive damage taken, that damage is reflected back onto the attacker. Uh, their stamina regen is really, really fast. So if you're, you know, being inked by two souls, for example, and your stamina is draining, it regens stamina super duper fast. It will gradually eat biotoxin by itself and do a lot of healing, which it is crazy. So this creature is truly designed to be the Wyvern of the ocean, and it is fantastic. This really is a dragon. It's not just a big, epic-looking sea slug. This is... Oh, I got demon. <laughs> this is definitely the dragon of the ocean, and it is so cool. Let's go see if I can find one of the underwater caves. Oh, see, there you go. Add a stamina, and whoop! <laughs> comes all the stamina. So speedy. And actually, while we're at it, let's check out leveling animation, shall we? Oh, that, that is beautiful. Oh, you know what? We've not actually had a good K-camera view of this. You are just absolutely stunning. Oh my god. Memorcolion and Jade did a beautiful job on the concept, and Scorching Cami. The model and animations are just fantastic. Mordecai's sounds as well are beautiful, really fitting, not too strong. They just complement it. Really feels like a gentle giant, even though it's really powerful for a gentle giant. And actually, one more thing. That mouse over it quickly. And Aroy's icon looks really good. Nice, clean icon. That is sharp. Okay, let's give you all the melee. And yeah, take it to an ocean cave. Well, I must say, Ocean Cave really isn't quite as scary as I expected. <laughs> but I got a couple of eels on me at least. Yay! Got a couple of eels with a couple of uh, angler fish. Let's wait for more to come up and use the discharge now. 
Oh! Well, I definitely... Oh! Okay. So it had no damage numbers, but it sure as hell killed a bunch of things. And I killed the 280s. Oh my god, just absolutely decimating. I might not be able to see what's happening, but I do know it's effective. And you know what? That's good enough for me! <laughs> One thing I'm also finding is that you only really seem to be having to aim vaguely in the direction. It's really not that you know aggressive in terms of where you aim if you're just like kind of vaguely there it's good enough and that is very player friendly so another really cool thing about the glaucus that i have been neglecting on is the fact that it can in fact go onto land oh my god just look at oh it's beautiful <laughs> and the animations are just what you'd expect that is stunning <laughs> it's it's derpy in the best way possible. This is a good, fantastic kind of derp. Oh my god. So it does have that hydration buff. Drying out will soon be debuffed. And what that means is that it, well, it's kind of obvious, it will dehydrate. <laughs> it just massively debuffs it so that it can't just, you know, be used as a ground creature. It's got really good movement speed, all things considered. It actually does have good movement speed for a, you know, a, a sea creature on land. Oh, but there we go. I can no longer sprint. Even then, still really good, actually. Uh, dried out, can't run or use electrical attacks. But I can still do maximum damage. Oh, I was wrong on that part then. So you can still do max damage, but of course. Oh, drying out. Oh, okay, so I just touched the water a little bit. Oh, there we go then. Oh no, so you can just be <laughs> in the shallows like this and still work. <laughs> I love that. I, I absolutely love this thing. Oh, wow. Oh, I went flying. <laughs> That's not intended. I just managed to hit a rock in a funny way, but that was awesome. <gasps> There's another one. I was just over... Oh, there you go. Oh, that one's kind of like a brownish color scheme. And much deeper. Well, not, not deeper. You know what I mean. It's not... Oh. Yeah, okay, so my first one then, the one I'm using now, was kind of tilted. So that's how they're supposed to look. Oh, interesting. I think I saw another one over here as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Okay, so I definitely did get the weirdo. This is how- oh, 130. This is how they're definitely supposed to be hovering in the ocean. In fact, that one's actually right side up, so it is a thing. Uh, you can disable this, by the way, but if you get off of your Glaucus for long enough, they will naturally f flip upside down and float. That will apply to your Tains as well. You can just let them idle and they'll float to the surface. Or you can go to the radial menu and disable it if you don't like that. <laughs> That's really, really cool. I really feel for the person who lives here to log in one day and just discover all of these random Glaucus are going to be so confused. <laughs> In fact, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them around her before Island. Imagine that. Okay, so after spending quite a bit of time just swimming across the entire map, I can confirm that the Glaucus seem to be a fairly uncommon spawn. I'd say about rarer than that of a Basilosaurus, but because they're always on the surface, they're very easy to spot. So not terribly common, but very easy to find. And there is this alpha variant. I mean, it's quite easy to spot. Every other Glaucus has been blue. They're very consistently blue because hence, you know, the giant blue dragon sea slug. This, oh, it's, it's got like a pinkish glow. That might just be like the, the ocean effects. Oh, you're definitely bigger and you are beautiful. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah, just simply, there you go, alpha Glaucus. And it went back down again. Right. Now, these are apparently supposed to be quite formidable so i think let's begin with the next time it stops moving hold on and i'm gonna shoot it with a projectile i missed oh wait did i miss hold on try that again Ooh, maybe if i can just like land a hit right there go on hit it <laughs> it's a little bit hard to aim but you can see by the way that for an alpha it is passive it's passive until provoked and I'm really trying to provoke it without one damaging attack, but it's, uh, I, I think my aim just sucks. Whoa! Oh, it is mad now. It is angry! Woohoo! Oh, you, you can really see the range on that ability. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful watching it, like, attack from a distance. Oh my god, guys, it's so beautiful. Oh, and it's fled because I obviously wasn't attacking back. 
Right, let's go for an actual fight then, shall we? I seem to be immune to the breath, which I guess makes sense. You know, that is the case of Wyverns in this game. The lightning is immune to its own lightning breath. The poison is immune to poison breath. I seem to be immune to its lightning breath. Definitely not its melee. It is hitting quite hard. So that means that would be why the, <laughs> the projectile couldn't hit it. It's because it's immune. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so he's just going to go sit back and just melee the crap out of it. Oh my goodness. So yes, I would imagine that fighting this on anything other than the Glaucus would be quite terrifying, especially because we've already concluded that Basilos can receive Torpor from these guys. And I would assume, well, we saw from the Baryonyx, that the electric attacks do also um, dismount. So yeah, you need a, a Glaucus to fight an Alpha Glaucus. That does make sense. It's like kind of like Alpha Wyverns, isn't it? You could fight them with other creatures, but you're better off using an a Wyvern yourself to fight the Alpha Wyverns. Oh, the red one. It's, I love the red. It's so cool. You know, it really is quite something to be fighting the pitch black night with all these jellyfish illuminating the area and of course these two Glaucus. Like, aberration came early, man. Aberration came early and there goes my scuba tank. Also, my Glaucus is very low on health, but thankfully <laughs> I can just do that. Right, I do think that's a little bit broken overpowered. It is a very large expenditure of biotoxin, which in ASA is quite rarer. But because the Glaucus do spawn with their jellyfish, it does therefore make the resource more plentiful. And therefore, you know, if it's more plentiful, you can waste it more. And I do think that's a little bit too powerful. But it is also awesome. Oh! And I accidentally dismounted. <laughs> Accidentally dismounted and the Alpha one shot me. Okay, cool, cool. So, in case you're wondering, the Alphas only drop um, saddles. They drop saddles for your Glaucus. So, if you want to get a quality Glaucus saddle, you're going to kill an Alpha. And I guess that makes sense because, as we saw, it was very much a possible fight. It would have been just down to paying attention to Glaucus's health, letting it eat biotoxin, and not accidentally dismounting. Okay. My closing thoughts on this mod is that it is beautifully crafted. It is so gorgeously crafted. Every aspect of it is just mm, fantastic. It feels great to play, feels great to use, is great to look at. I would really recommend it. I highly, highly would. Um, I do feel like that given that all you have to do, feed it in the Dario corpses, which it frequently spawns with, damage it enough, and then get an egg, I do feel like that's a little bit easy for what you get out of it. You get such a strong, gorgeous creature. I feel like the taming or the acquisition is a little bit easy. However, I was using a Basilosaurus, which is immune to stuns and all that kind of stuff. So maybe that was it, right? And it was a low level one. As I've already seen, got a, got a 165. You can get them to be spawned higher than, you know, the level cap. So I feel like Basilos are already broken, so I guess it makes sense. That's like really my only thing is that it just felt a little bit easy to get. But I guess if like literally any other creature, it would be much more of a formidable challenge. And the fact it requires level 88 means that you actually have to play the game a fair bit before you can even get it in the first place. Really, really awesome. Massively recommend. Again, Memicolion and your team, seriously, well done. If you want to play this mod, you'll find it in the video description down below. Give them all your best, and thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you've enjoyed this.